Good evening, respected guests, directors, faculty members, and dear student managers. Vinod Bidwak, sir, is a global HR leader with more than 20 years of experience in HR, with 15 years of leadership experience in big Indian and multinational industries, with manufacturing media, automobile, life science, and material science and machine equipment companies. He is currently working with Alpha Laval Region India, Middle East, and Africa as CHRO and VP HR. He is also a management team of Alpha Laval India. Prior to this, he was working with DSM India Private Limited as Director HR and was a part of India management team of DSM India. Vinod Bidwak sir has extensively worked in the areas of organization redesign, organizational development, HR transformation, new way of working, employee experience, talent management, talent development, and development centers, and etc. He also worked at Shanghai, Singapore, Netherlands on short-term and long-term assignments. He previously worked with Mahindra and Mahindra at their engine plant as a head HR and IR, Sempet Group as a plant HR head, and Sakal Media Group as a chief manager and corporate HR. He has an expertise working on greenfield projects and its establishing HR function. He has authored Marathi books, College to Corporate via interviews, Swoy Vikasichi, Swam Prerna, and Vyakti Vatma, Vikasasa Kulas, and English books, Password to Enriched Life, and Holistic Approach to Employee Engagement. He is recipient of prestigious Asia Pacific HM Leadership Award 2014, given at Asia Pacific HM Congress, held at Bengaluru, and Vibrant Gaurav Puraskar 2016, given by Vibrant Group. Association of HR Professional and Pune HR Leader 2017 by HRD Congress. Vinod sir is microbiology graduate. He has done Masters in Personal Management from Pune University, Diploma in Production Management, Strategic Intervention Program from Strategy Academy, and Strategic HRM Management from IIM Ahmedabad. He partners the role of business HR partner and his organization witness the persistent growth through the aligned human resource management practices. So, the dice is all yours. Good evening. So big applause for you all once again. I would like to share uh, one incident. Last week, I was in one of the management institute here in Pune. I was invited as a speaker. And today, I have been escorted by two very smart students. So that institute also invited me. And there were two students who actually came to pick me and drop me in the home. I asked them that, <coughs> you know, before joining this particular institute, why you not study different institute in Pune? So what is your criteria choosing for a particular institute? And then I was asking them a lot of questions that why you choose this, what is the you know, fees, have you uh, researched on the placement record, blah, blah, blah. And then I asked them that there are certain institute and he said that there is one institute he wanted to join, but that institute works almost 365 days in a year and he doesn't want it to spoil his life. Yeah, I think you lost. I told him that you lost here only. So I think stretching oneself, so and I must congratulate you by being known that you are not getting any holidays, at least for one year, right? Working for 365 days and almost 12 to 15 hours in a day. And I can imagine my situation today that what I have to tell you because you must be working from early morning and then you, you must be over drained today, yes, no? You are over drained today, yes, no? And then this is a big challenge for me, what I tell you. Yeah? No, yes, no. Yeah. So I think that is the one fundamental difference which I have been observing over a period of time in different management institutes where a lot of efforts are put on the student and students actually are prepared to take the challenges in corporate world. And I must congratulate you for choosing and risking your life. You are risk-taking people, yes? Knowing that 365 days, 12 hours, and you don't know, you also have to do a lot of stuff, homeworks, preparation for event. And I congratulate 
you for making this event successful also today's event yes so why i am here i am here to share my personal stories but i also would like to ponder some thoughts what is in the corporate world because i am not here to tell you what is the motivation what are the different trends happening in the industries you know how the demography is changing how the industries are changing i think you already has done some research google baba eh? and everything is available on google so there are a lot of sites tech talks slideshare.in google and you know lot many you can learn lot many things from there so i am not going to tell anything about the working trends what are the challenges you can learn but i would like to tell you some stories about myself and try to relate my learning and how i am grown in the organization or in the industry as a professional i can say a little bit and i can actually uh, you know a successful professional and what made me successful in the corporate life so that i would like to say some stories <clears throat> i am also facing some coughing so <laughs> you know uh, please forgive me for that so i am also you know like you <laughs> yeah so let me start there is a oh it is back side you know this is the same auditorium long back and i am going to, going to speak about my journey from campus to this for the ups and downs i spoke on this same forum Three years back, I, I think in two thousand fifteen or sixteen, I don't remember the exact year, but that was also a wonderful year that day. And I spoke that time on on uh, the future of work. A little bit student were scared. I don't want to make you scared today, because I'm not speaking on a future of work. You know already what the future of work will be. What are different trends in the industries and how the new millennial workforce. need to find to themselves so i am not going to speak about them you can do a enough google search on that but one of the fundamental questions we need to ask to ourselves that why some people do some different things and that different things which actually they don't want to do that right why do some people climb mountains and just one month back there was a news that everybody wanted to climb mount everest yes you must have read the news and there were a lot of people in the line but imagine the situation long back because nowadays it's very easy because of helicopters and the tourist companies providing the services but why people want to climb the mountains why they want to do that working in a adverse situation going on the mountains they have to spend lot of money but why what is their motive to do that while others runs there are marathons i have seen the people in pune there are a lot of marathons happens i encourage you to participate early in the morning pune marathon there are different marathons towards satara why they run you know they wake up early in the morning around 5 o'clock and then they go practice for the marathons so they run over a period of time and other just sit yeah and that is also the motivation what is their motivation just sitting idle and doing nothing even nowadays there is there are gadgets different gadgets you have you are sitting you can explore facebook whatsapp but there are people who doesn't want to explore anything just they sit idly watching around and why do millions of people go to work each day in mumbai in pune in bangalore in chennai the traffic situation is worst to go your job it takes almost 2 hours 3 hours there are people traveling from pune to industrial area which is almost 60 kilometers away from here there is another industrial area is hardly 30 kilometers from away there is a hinjewadi and people take almost 3 hours 4 hours traveling daily in the automobile industries in equipment industries so why they do that why they do that 
What is their motivation? Any idea? To earn money? Yes. To get salaries, to get paid, to run their families. But that's the fundamental question. What is their motivation? Somebody's motivation may be only money. Somebody's motivation may be to do something different in the life. And there are people who are actually giving everything to the society and doing something different for the society. So what is their motivation? They don't want to do earn the money for their children, to make their families rich, but they just take and get away from the, and then they live the minimalistic life. So what is their motivation also? And our every action drives that motivation. And motivation can be different things. So it can be your, uh, why you enroll for this course, for example. There must be something motivation. You wanted to be a manager, you wanted to go in a corporate world, and I appreciate that you took this decision. But then what is next for you? That fundamental questions we need to ask ourselves. And still I ask that, what is that motivation for me coming here today? What is the motivation I go in the job? What is the motivation? And with the right motivation, what can't we do? We can do everything. And that's the fundamental things come. That we need to ask why people could do the job. What is their passion? What is their motivation to do different things in the life? I would like to share my stories and my learnings. And there is much more coming. I will not take your much time. I want to free you, you uh, maybe after half an hour and then we can take few questions. So I was also like you sitting in the rows, most of the time back, back side, not front row. And then I would listen always these speakers coming from different industries. They used to give a lot of gan. That time in 1997-2000, Google was not much prominent. So we used to go in a libraries and there were big reference books. So we used to get a lot of gans from our speakers coming from the industries and they used to tell their experiences. And then we had something in different in mind. Like you also must have that once the placement happens, what will happen? So my first company was typical Indian manufacturing company, name as India Steel and Allied Industries, very heavy industries. And I joined there as a management trainee to recruit and train people in the organization. So imagine the situation, education situation in India. We used to hire diploma trainees from engineering diplomas to work as a workman on the assembly line. And there was a lot of attraction. So I was OK that joining, getting experience, connecting with different colleges, ITI colleges, engineering colleges, management institutes. So I was enjoying my life. And all of a sudden, after six months, I came to know that the union decided to go on a strike. And then they get out. The works manager, so that time there were not a fancy designation. Works manager means in, in charge of the factory. So they get out. Do you know what is get out? Uh, they actually keep him in a, and they were not allowing him to go outside the factory. And then my boss actually sent a letter to the next day, sent a letter that they also threaten him and he is not joining the job. So he don't, doesn't want it to come on the job. And then actually my job started. Then works manager called me and he told me that, you know, now recruitment and training is enough. Now he has to deal with the unions. And the union was leftist union, which is affiliated to C2. Do you know C2? Yes, no? Sorry? No? It is affiliated to leftist CPM. Yeah. And how they are, you know. So then he told that, what you are doing here? We don't need now to recruit the people or train the people. We need to run the factory with this, and we have to escalate this. And my first job was to, to issue the pen, suspension pending inquiry letters to the union office bearers. It was just like your, you know, imagine your situation after two years. What must be the situation? And then. What I learned there that, okay, there were two options. 
either the leave, leave that company because the job profile was not what I, I was expecting. It was industry relations, dealing with the union or either stay there and learn something, do different things. I decided to learn. I decided that okay, it's also the great opportunity. At least I will learn how to deal with unions, how to negotiate with them. And I don't know, I'm not I don't remember now how I with, dealt with them, but I was able to issue the charge set and these five members of his bearers were out of the company. But then the long story, they went into the court and then industrial court order that they can't agitate in front of the company. But imagine the situation, there are different people, 100 and 200 people outside the factory and you have to go there and actually put the notice and issue the suspension pending inquiry notice. What I did? What, the, what I should do in such circumstances? Either fight or other flight. Yeah. Flight. Fight. But this, this doesn't happen. Most of the people just give the excuse that this job, because I also interview a lot many people, and they give the excuse that the job profile offered to him was not what was told during the interviews. So I decided that, okay, this is a learning opportunity for me. And believe me, after that, within three years, I joined, based on that experience, I joined one of the multinational company as a plant HR head at the age of, hardly based on the experience of three years, which was Semperit group. I joined there as a Semperit. So what is this? This is my journey I would like to explore. This seems to be like resume. Yeah? You see, this seems to be like I joined a multinational company which was coming in India and I was engaged HR head there for managing their plant. And then I joined different companies. So you see that this is these are the different companies there. There are different titles. But what titles means to you? Yeah? We join companies for titles. This is not important what is there. The important is what I built. Most of the times we see that my journey from management trainee to chief HR officer or vice president HR or head HR or director HR is just like this, right? So what we assume what most people want to climb the ladders in their life and be a successful, but then I realize that this is not the case. This is like this. Most of the successful careers look like. So I failed a lot of on a lot of occasions. There is also learning. I succeeded in most of the things, so that is also a learning, but it was never, never a easy and smooth journey for me. When I took a different role, there were a lot of transitions, a lot of challenges, and the challenges were not about functional knowledge, right? You will learn your school in this, I should, I should call as a school, huh? <laughs> it's a management institute, you should learn here most of the functional knowledge theories, but learning is not about that. Learning is about how you deal with different stakeholders, how you influence the stakeholders, different people in the ecosystem. It may be outside the industry. It may be in your company. So learning is not about functional knowledge. Most of the times what we say that I learn marketing, I learn HR, I learn how to give the charge sheet, I learn, you know, data analytics, blah, blah, blah. That is not important. That is definitely, that's why you are here. You will learn that. And that is very easy because that is a knowledge. Yes? Knowledge can be learned easily. If you are smart, if you are an engineer, you will learn how, what is a trigonometry, what is a dynamic. So you will learn everything. The important thing is how you apply that knowledge. How you deal with different people in the industry and not only industry in different ecosystem of the society, of the industry and of the corporate world. So more successful careers are fail 
because of this, not because of the functional knowledge. You may be an expert marketing person, you may be an expert sales person, but not necessarily you can be a successful in the career. So that is very important to understand. And when you run, so what I did, what I did in my different career stages, I learned these are the different dimensions and this is called as a formative experiences. And I, I actually advise you to work and focus more on your, how you can develop your formative experiences. Definitely you should focus to qualify your exams in your college, like your HR, finance, marketing, you can definitely focus on that. But you also during next two years should focus on leadership building experiences, perspective building experiences and core and functional experiences. So when I took my first job and when I was forced to work in industry relations, I tried to build my experience on these three areas. So there was no legacy. Yes. So what is this? What I did in over a period of time in my different experiences, I tried to fix something which was broken. There was a strike. There is a issues in the organization. So I tried to fix something that is broken. So that what I did in my career. I started something different new, like which was not earlier. So today, my past few years experience in leadership position is more, more, moreover on a something new, like redesign, organization redesign, implementing something new initiatives in the organization, some projects and other things. So that's something is a totally starting something new. Influencing without authority. So what I did, when I used to issue the charge sheet to the union and who are very dominant union members and that time, today they are very sophisticated. Nowadays, if you are in HR, you will not face such problems. But in our college days, the unions were militant. So I tried to influence without authority. There will be no hierarchies in the organization. So when you enter in a corporate world, you have to influence different stakeholder in the ecosystem without any title. You will not call as a head, but still you have to influence that. And you have to deal with more complex and unfamiliar situations. So how I build my leadership style based on this? I built because there was something different. So in your career, when you are working, or maybe next two years, you try to work some complex and which is not known to you. Dealing with the union was totally unknown to me. And today also when there are circumstances, it is unknown to you. So it is actually a risk taking ability we need to work on. So I did this. And what I build on that? I build on that my leadership experience. So I learn how to lead without the authority. And nowadays there are flat organizations. You will not see any fancy titles and fancy des designations. There is not much hierarchies. So there will be the head and then there, there are employees. So you have to actually work with the team without any authority, without any titles, without any, and you have to still influence them. So that is leadership building. Perspective building. You have to understand in different cultures. So I tried to understand while dealing with different people in the ecosystem that what they like, what they don't like. Like in this room, there is a all India demography sitting in this room from north to south and east to west. And you have the great opportunity to build your perspective, understanding how people work, what is the cultural differences, what is the social differences in that, and how you can make them included in there. And third is technology, technical building or functional capabilities. Like I should know when I am dealing with certain circumstances, I should know how to deal with the union. If I am implementing a redesigning, I should know what the redesigning concept means, how the organization structures are made, what should be the span of controls, how many hierarchies based on the uh, market should be there and which market we are. So we should understand that. I build on that. And how I did that? So whenever I work, it was first time for me. Like my first experience, when I went to the union, it was my first experience. I never worked in such circumstances. 
and every day in my career i try that i have totally different experience i don't have something that okay in similar circumstances you know there are some people they 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 demand what is my job description so there are no job descriptions i never tried that most of the time consultant and student before joining any company ask that what is a job description there are no job descriptions there are only job definitions nowadays so you will get a marketing manager but you may have to which is not written in a job description so it is totally different new things you know like you join here is a new you are not aware about that what a pune city you try it coming from jaipur coming from ghaziabad or some different areas of the india there is a risk of failure whenever i work in any situation i saw that there is a risk of failure like the failure what would have been the failure in my first case i would have been beaten by the union members right or i would have been unable to issue the charge sheet i would have been unable you know there were a lot of chances of failures but unless you don't take a risk and you just foresee that what is a success and failure it is not going to help so there is a possibility that i may get failure missing something not ready so you will not get tools technology everything is not available for you you will not get the resources if you are put in a sales team not necessary you will get a resources there so something is missing the processes may missing people may be missing systems may be missing you may have to deal with different people i work with different people i am not aware about them whenever i join in different companies totally new experiences new people whenever you will go in the market there will be new people because most of the time we are comfortable with the people to whom we like yes you will form the group you will sit together in the dining table with the same people you will actually travel with them with the same people we create friend we like people and most likely likability syndrome we carry over a period of time it is good because we are comfortable there but sometimes it is required to come from our out of the comfort box comfort zone and try something different in life and personally as a person as a human being that has a additional pressure like you will have pressure to next two years yeah additional pressure a pressure of something losing pressure of peer pressure pressure of failure health pressure of waking up early in the morning a yeah? lot of pressures so my perspective building happens on this now if you think that whenever like take an example of this event who are the leader for this event you are sitting there like there are there there must be a team working here uh behind this event almost one year what you are working that is a new experience for you yes no so you already started learning there is a possibility of failures some speaker may say that i am not coming uh, i am busy accidents medical emergencies or audits some speaker may say this yes no so there is a possibility of failure imagine this experience what was in this all the cases it was something i hadn't done before yes i could have failed i was missing something important it was really ready sometimes we are not ready you know 11th hour audio system doesn't work speaker doesn't turn up or simple photographer is not available i am giving a very simple example now you take these examples in your corporate world you have to work with new people it put additional personal pressure and blah 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 things so so in all cases in the corporate work whenever you are there success is not guaranteed success is never guaranteed there is a huge opportunity to be fail i am using the word opportunity to be fail and you should fail for your first experience should be that how i can fail there is a huge opportunity because there will be lot of learning from the failures it doesn't mean that you fail in exams 
the responsibility rests with you no is nobody is going of the failure there are a lot of you know if if you are successful everybody will take credit your parents your professors everybody will take the credits but if you are fail they will say you are not studied nobody will take the credit of that so in the life in the corporate world if you are running any project or you are not achieving your kras nobody will say your bosses will always say that you know you are not done this but if you did good what they will say a hey, market was good what you did market is economy is booming you are achieving t- your target but if you not doing good what they will say you are not done they will not say the market is not doing good so in whole process we get a hit as a professional in corporate world i took a lot of hits now let me explain you what this hit means right in our whole process in whole journey of being mba or in being as a professional you will also get a hit what is that hit means there are certain circumstances you see that we start our journey from frozen to you know extreme hit what is frozen so there are new opportunities there are very high pressure it means that you are getting a hit if you are comfortable then you are not getting any hit so most of the time frozen me just you are navigating you are just swimming or just you in the water and you are not taking any efforts and you are doing so that is frozen you are frozen but if you have a learning ability you are learning new skills learning to deal with different people learning to take risk learning to build leadership perspective other perspective then you will start getting risk and hit and that hit is always good for learning and sometimes that hit goes extreme and then people burn out so we call normally a stress management in different companies they have program stress management so optimum stress is always good but if you see that then you get overloaded you get anxiety and you 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 actually burn out and then you take a holiday you want don't want to come on a job but write down that experiences what you have that what are that different hits you you would like to take would you like would you like to be frozen just coming in the office or in the college and go home at or hostel at specific period or doing or speaking and you know just doing your academics what hit you want to take and these two years are good opportunity to take the hits what I, why i am saying that i am still taking a hits and perhaps i am taking optimum hits and it is always a learning because i imagine when i started my career the situation was totally different we had different offices new way, and totally now what i am working is totally new my job description when i was joined the company was totally different today hr is totally different even we don't call hr i was reading one just old book of hr and i saw that it was totally out, outdated hr book which still is taught in the mba students but today hr is totally different so that transition is happening and that is possible because of the learning so to summarize with when you start your career journey or whatever journey there are there are different challenges going on but there are a lot of opportunities available provided you think that that challenges are the opportunities so i wish you all the best and thank you for listening me patiently the house is now open for questions hello good evening sir good evening uh, i would like to ask that alpha levels into what manufacturing products okay good question so alpha level how many of you know alpha level quiet who are in pune so let me explain you alpha level is actually a global company is a swedish multinational almost in india from 60s uh, they are into in three technology what is that technology one technology is centrifugal technology so in our you know in older days grandmothers used to churn the milk you know that and they used to make uh, curd and uh, you know chaj and uh, ghee etc etc 
so that is a centrifugal technology with alpha level line so alpha level has it is called as a separation technology so we manufacture equipments which separates liquid to liquid or solid to liquid so we separate that so that the equipments we manufacture flow equipments so which actually liquid goes inside and it flows and it heats and then is converted into different things okay so boilers heat exchangers which normally use uh, in uh, oems so alpha level has their equipments in every industry like pharma industry uh, you have big plants protein extractions oil shipping where the water is uh, purified and we have another business which call as a product i will say is a decanters which actually is a sewage treatment plants which actually are separated with our equipments so alpha level is equipment manufacturing company very high technology where uh, their presence is in everywhere so from enzymes everywhere what the processes are done that is processed with the alpha level equipments understood